Then we get into actual KPIs, and this one I've actually st stolen from, from these two guys. Uh, and this is an awesome book, and I strongly recommend you to read it. However, I would like to take out some bits and pieces that I found really useful. Now, Lean Analytics or, or actionable KPIs are all about learning. So they're all about uh, a movement towards your business goals. And so they are there to evaluate how well, like how well is your content doing in relation to, to the content that you produced just like a minute ago and posted and got some results back on. Now, if you don't try to use measurement in order to get better at what you do, you will continue doing the same thing as you are doing right now. And so, you know, that follows simple logic. You know, if you don't try to improve, if you don't have a process to actually improve, then you will continue to suck. If you suck, and you will be a champion if you're a champion. Now, most of us actually suck at doing this, these kind of things, like working through networks rather than you know, speaking to networks. So most of us need some kind of framework in order to get better at this. The Lean Analytics framework is awesome for that. Now, they, take, they, they have a different take on, on metrics that, that, than we talked about in the usable metrics section. They, they look at good metrics as uh, a comparable kind of metric. You know, you can compare it. You can look at, you know, the, po the post on Facebook that we did last time uh, got better or worse uh, results than the post that we posted this time. Uh, then, then, you know, you can change accordingly. If you improve, then you should continue doing that kind of stuff. If you do worse, then you should stop doing the stuff that you've started doing. Uh, secondly, they should be uh, understandable. And this is just so that, that uh, people around you and you yourself understand what they mean. This is very, very common, especially when you work in big organizations, uh, that, that people have reported on a KPI for ages, yet only a few people in the room understand what they mean. You really need to work on that and choose KPIs carefully in order to get people to understand. Now, there should be a ratio or a rate, and that's because a ratio or a rate shows change, or it's a much better type of metric to show, to, to show change. And then it's also about you know something that, that these two guys who wrote the book uh, talk a lot about, uh, they should change the way you behave. And what they mean with this is that if you look at a metric and it doesn't tell you uh, what went wrong, meaning how you need to change your behavior uh, or what went well, you know, if that number or, or ratio or rate doesn't tell you that, uh, then what will happen is that nothing will happen as a result of looking at the, the KPI. And so it's not really useful for learning. You know, for learning purposes. And so it's not an actionable KPI. And so when you construct KPIs uh, that are supposed to change your behavior, you ne really need to take that into consideration. Blah, blah. Uh, now, there are some, you know, some, some metrics that can, can give you bad advice, even though they have a, a strong correlation and they, evolve, they, they elaborate on this in the book as well. Now, Two examples just to show you what I mean about that is, for example, here, here we got the, the a classic uh, uh, example where the average number of, of pirates in the world, uh, it has a, has a negative correlation with the global average temperature. Uh, that's kind of funny, you know, because if we would trust this graph to be true, I mean, if the rate of change, as you can see in this, it actually correlates. So if we would then increase the number of pirates, then the global average temperature would go down. Uh, that's not true. We know that. Uh, but they just happen to correlate. And in the next example here that they also have in the book is about ice creams and drownings, like ice cream consumption and drownings. They also correlate beautifully. However, there is an exogenous, meaning there is a, a, a factor outside of this model that actually affects both of them. And if you can look here on the x-axis or on what's written in the bottom here, there are the months in the, in the year. And as you can see, it, pro it probably is so that both of these also correlate with the fact that there is summer. Uh, so why do I show you this? Well, as they argue and as I argue, uh, just because something correlates, meaning if you can find it in the data, like if you can find like one of those nice percentages that seem to change when you change something, when you do something, this number changes in a positive direction. 
that doesn't necessarily mean that it that it changes because of what you did. It might be that it changes because of something else that happened, meaning you will sell more umbrellas if it's raining outside. It doesn't matter what you wrote on the window that, 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 that day. So if you do not look at you know, all the different kind of things that might um, affect uh, the stuff that you did, you might end up with false positives, meaning you might end up in you know one of these like pirates versus global average temperature situations or ice cream consumption versus drowning situations, or more likely you will be able to uh, report something to your bosses because you want to do it rather than uh, it is something that is actually the truth. It's not dependent upon uh, uh, like what you want to do does not actually change what you're trying to do um, now or what you're trying to achieve now with that said it's 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 you know sometimes we might need data in order to convince bosses to dare do stuff but we need to do that with our you know mind in check right uh, and we we but 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 the purpose here is not to convince people because there is data enough in the world that we can convince anyone rationally to do anything. So so what we want to use this data for is to actually learn, and that's why we talk about these actionable KPIs. And I like to look 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 at it from the perspective, just as the authors, that you should use the data in order to try to prove yourself wrong. And this is very difficult in some cultures, especially some company cultures, and um, to actually be wrong. But the faster you can be wrong, the actually better it is. Because as I say, you know, you've all seen the conversation prism and social media and stuff. There's just too much to do out there. And so if we can get some of those things off the table, excellent situation. And the way that I go about doing this is to work with some kind of qualitative data, meaning I ask people, I do focus groups, I uh, do interviews with intercom.io on a website. I, you know, I collect a lot of like ideas essentially. Uh, and then I, you know, create a hypothesis, like if I were to do what they would, what, what they told me to do, uh, then uh, this is what it would look like. And then I test that to be wrong. So I assume in my mind that I should try to find a way to prove this to be wrong. If I can't find a way to prove it to be wrong, well, then I will probably in implement it on, on, on my website or in my social media strategy or in my video or whatever. Uh, some people call this insight and analysis. Other people, especially advertising people, they call it gut feel and learning. I mean, as, as, as long as you do it, you know, you don't have to put a fancy name on it in order for it to be true.